to another old steam power machine shop. If you're new to this channel, I'll just tell you that this is a shop that I put together several years ago uh, to run on steam power with line shaft, flat belts, and using pretty old machinery. Uh, and there's nothing here newer than 1925, and some of this stuff goes back into the 1890s. <clears throat> but I wanted to see what it would be like to carry on everyday business uh, with steam power. So uh, the front shop is primarily uh, more modern engine rebuilding jobs. <clears throat> this is the engine that I've been working on for a couple years now, off and on. Uh, it's the third engine that I've rebuilt here in the shop, and uh, uh, it's a Wiley built in Erie, Pennsylvania. And on this video, I'm going to rebore the cylinder. Uh, the cylinder was uh, not in as bad a shape as you'd have thought. Uh, it was a little out around, a little tapered, and I wanted to make a new piston for it and make it really right. So I bored it on the horizontal boring mill, which is not steam powered, but uh, it gives you a good idea of what is involved with boring a cylinder of that size. <clears throat> also, uh, managed to, after a couple of years of messing around with it, got the uh, uh, flywheel off the end of the crankshaft on, on this engine and uh, I, <laughs> I ended up drilling the keyway out. Uh, I used a transfer punch. The key was down in the, in the key slot a little bit on the outside of the pulley. And I used a transfer punch and I, I got it right in the middle and I put the whole thing in the bridge port. The flywheel on the, on the uh, table with the crankshaft hanging over the side bolted it down straight with the flywheel and consecutively drilled the key out and I got it dead center so that all that was left was the four corners which I was able to knock out. Because that key was jammed in there so tight that it just wouldn't let it loose. It was like a Chinese handcuff because the key way is tapered as well as the key being tapered. And it skidded in the key way so it tightened it up when it came off and I could not get it out. So. That's a big step forward. So I got the crankshaft in the lathe and I'm starting to clean it up and remachine it and true it up. And uh, we'll cover that. And uh, a few other little bits and pieces that I'll show you. So, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your subscription. That last video has gone bigger than any of the others uh, would use. And uh, I just appreciate the fact that you guys are interested in what I do here. Thanks a lot. So here's the setup to bore the steam engine cylinder on a 1939 vintage GNL horizontal boring mill on electric power because there's really no practical way to convert it to line shaft power and uh, until I get an older horizontal boring mill this is the way I have to do it. So the cylinder's lined up here on uh, tested it on both ends many times running it back and forth with a uh, guide piece in here and uh, feeler gauges top bottom left and right and uh, I've got it pretty straight within a couple thousands I think uh, one thing that's kind of important with steam engine cylinders is there's a relief a slightly larger diameter relief that goes in on this cylinder about maybe three quarters of an inch on each end and that the piston rings actually run over into that relief slightly on each end in order to keep any kind of a ridge from building up as it wears with, which would hammer against it if anything in the bearings were changed like in the rod uh, taking up the uh, uh, rod bearing would make the rod slightly smaller or sw slightly longer which would make it hit those uh, ridges. So <clears throat> I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to take out of this but I'm taking out only enough to get it round and straight and cleaned up full length and then I'll make an oversized piston to fit. But I will have to probably go back and recut these reliefs a little bit into the same exact depth uh, is the original. 
So <clears throat> I'm set up here for the first cut and I'm going to take just a trial cut and try to just touch it uh, from one end to the other to see where I'm at in alignment. The first pass down through there is just scratching the surface to see where I'm at. like all that time spent lining that cylinder up paid off because it's going right down Main Street taking about maybe two thousandths off all the way around Now we got to hone it, <clears throat> get the surface finish up where it should be to seat the rings. I'm using kerosene here. You can see the surface finish and uh, after I got through with the bore I uh, cut this relief back uh, it's about maybe 15 thousandths back to right where it was at the edge of the port here on both ends And I miked it. Uh, about 
an inch into the bore horizontally and vertically on both ends and it came out with uh, within a half a thousandth uh, all the dimensions so we got a pretty straight round cylinder here at uh, 6 inch 129 and a half what it ended up being so the new piston will be made to fit that well this goes to show you if you got a big enough puller and a big enough wrench it can do about anything. I tried everything to get this off of here last year. I finally drilled out the key and now it's coming right off just like nothing. Just like nothing. I have the crankshaft in the lathe here, so what I'm going to be doing is turning down the journals on each side to get rid of this uh, pitting in here and uh, the actual size I end up with doesn't really matter because I'm going to be pouring the uh, Babbitt bearing to match. I want to keep it this same size out through here because the eccentric goes on here and uh, all the pulley goes on the other end. So we're just going to smooth it up. I'm going to take a couple of cosmetic cuts off of here uh, to get this pitting, a little of this pitting out of here and then I'll probably put some Bondo in there and smooth it down. Uh, the pin I miked it before and it showed itself to be uh, uh, about one and a half thousandths out of round. So I think it's probably going to be okay to go. I'll make a final decision on that when I get done with this main bearing stuff.
down to the base metal on this and you can see telltale signs it's wrought iron really crummy stuff which changes my whole attention on this engine I know that this thing is about 1910, but why they would use wrought iron in a crankshaft is beyond me. Finish cut. Slightly more rounded point on the tool. A little more rake and a little more clamps. Being wrought iron, it's hard to get a good surface finish for the lathe tool. Tom's working on a part for the lathe. finishing up a spacer that was missing off that lathe for years and years, never got around to making it. Goes right here. So it holds the cover on it. I'll show you when we get this done. It's going to take a little off this thrust space here. And then I'll polish it. The Mighty Richard's Iron Works engine just keeps on chugging.
set up on a tracker and it's uh, Alice Chandler's WD and uh, it's a complete head rebuild job. And uh, this is down to the bare casting here. And there's one or two here exhaust port gasket surfaces that are really eroded. So the customer wanted me to plant this down on top. And uh, it's really a Good job for the 32 inch shaper. So, uh, you know, we'll Change to a uh, finishing tool, which is a kind of a flat nose, angled cutting edge, what you call a shear tool for uh, finish pass, probably five thousandths just to get the surface finish right. Okay, so that part is finished and it will go on to the next step which will be the guides and the valves, the valve seats and, uh, and then this part will be, the head gasket surface will be surfaced in the regular head grinder. On the video I did before this one, uh, I did some work for a uh, fellow YouTuber, uh, Pete Larson. He's got a channel called Just a Few Acres, and uh, it's about farm life and maintaining his equipment and all that. And uh, uh, one of the things I did for him uh, was rebuild the connecting rods uh, for that engine, and I just didn't have time to put them on the last video, so I'll just throw them in at the end of this one. Uh, connecting rods need to be uh, refinished on both ends and I already did the bottom ends and I forgot to take video of it but basically what happens is the parting surfaces get cut back about five thousandths on both the cap and the rod 
and uh, then in the honing machine over here they're honed back round again to original specs and uh, that refinishes the bottom. Now the top has got a brass bushing in here that's got to be pressed out. The new bushing pressed in and then honed to fit the pins, the piston pins uh, on the same machine and I'll show you how that works. These are mandrels that I've made up through the years that are different diameters for different sizes. And this one fits this one. That's that one. Okay, so now we're putting the new bushing in there, which is not brass, it's aluminum, but that's what they have these days. <clears throat> Gotta line the oil hole up at the top. started This is a stone, a home stone right there, and on the other side is a guide, and uh, in order to hone this uh, brass bushing out, I have a pedal that I'm uh, touching on the floor, and push it all the way down, and you can see where you're at here. Each one of these big numbers is 1,000, so these are tenths uh, on the small lines, and you can see it increase in size as you go along. I like to flip it over, about a half thousand. <clears throat> When it, <clears throat> when it cleans up the bushing and it becomes round, you can feel it it's just like glass. It travels very smoothly back and forth. I'm going to increase the pressure just a little bit. A lot of a feel thing with this machine. And you can set this gauge up to gauge these, but it's 
it's kind of a pain in the neck to switch over the pins. So I just kind of do it by feel. It's got a long ways to go. Okay, so that's about zero right there. Zero clearance, it won't drop through. So I'm gonna go about two tenths more on the gauge here. That's it.